A zombie is a dead body revived by witchcraft, capable of movement but not rational thought. Are we talking about the Commonwealth here? Possibly. Some Australian commentators are deriding the Commonwealth Summit in London as a zombie summit. They say the meeting has no important purpose and leaders should do, would do well rather to give this summit a miss. Australian Prime Minister Mr Turnbull is there, although he gave no valid reason to attend other than an invitation from the Queen of England. Also attending are 52 other heads of state including Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India, arguably the most high profile leader present there. But this is the first summit an Indian Prime Minister is attending in many years. No Indian PM attended the last three summits in Malta, Colombo and Perth. For that matter, Britain is hosting this summit for the first time since 1997, two decades. So what happened? Why is the Commonwealth receding? The relevance of the Commonwealth has increasingly come into question. Britain, which founded the Commonwealth, joined Europe in 1973 and moved closer to America. India's foreign policy priorities have diverged. The US, Japan, ASEAN and Israel are now India's key allies. The Commonwealth could never emerge as a coherent political bloc because the membership is so diverse, 53 countries. Some members are locked in bilateral disputes with other members such as India and Pakistan over Kashmir. Then again, London showed interest in the Commonwealth only after Brexit. Britain has to show that its renewed focus on the Commonwealth is not opportunistic. It must convince other members that it is driven by hard economic realities that indeed exist. So what is the economic relevance of the Commonwealth, you'd ask? Studies show that members trade 20% more, save 19% in costs, generate 10% more FDI, foreign direct investment. So the group stands to benefit from expanded trade and its members have much to lose from protectionism. Prime Minister Narendra Modi sees value in greater trade and investment. He also sees a geopolitical prize here. The Commonwealth is one grouping where India faces no competition from emerging superpowers. It's an ideal platform to reach out to Africa. Remember, 19 members from that continent are part of the Commonwealth. India can also use the Commonwealth to champion a global rules-based order. There's a lot for India to do there. India is expected to overtake Britain this year to become the world's fifth largest economy. The buzz is that Britain is hopeful that India will take the driver's seat. India is poised to steer this group to take its place as a powerful trading bloc. Britain and India are already negotiating a free trade agreement. As the group's biggest member, this could be an opportunity for India and for Prime Minister Modi to give new life and purpose to the Commonwealth, which explains what the Indian Prime Minister is doing in London. No wonder then that of the 53 heads of state present in London, Prime Minister Narendra Modi remained the top headliner for the second day today. He has a packed schedule. He had a packed schedule today. The summit kicked off at the iconic Buckingham Palace, formerly inaugurated by Queen Elizabeth. This is the first time, as I said, in a decade that an Indian Prime Minister is attending. Remember, Prince Charles travelled to India personally to extend a special invitation to Mr Modi. The Commonwealth has been a fundamental feature of my life for as long as I can remember, beginning with my first visit to Malta when I was just five years old. I consider myself fortunate over the years to have been able to meet and talk with so many of the giants of the Commonwealth. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I pray that this Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting will not only revitalize the bonds between our countries, but will also give the Commonwealth a renewed relevance to, its, to all its citizens, finding practical solutions to their problems and giving life to their aspirations. On Friday, the leaders will spend time at the Windsor Castle where they'll get a chance to interact with each other informally. Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Shahid Khan Abbasi, is also present in London for this event, but no formal interaction is expected between him and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Many other leaders, though, are vying for India's attention. The host country, Britain, is putting its best foot forward. It hopes to use this occasion to strengthen ties with Commonwealth countries, especially India. As the UK leaves the European Union and renegotiates its relationship with traditional allies, it wants to rekindle historic ties with Commonwealth nations. Queen Elizabeth used this stage to emphasize that the UK remains committed to the Commonwealth. She appealed to the leaders to appoint her son, Prince Charles, to succeed her as the head. It is my sincere wish that the Commonwealth will continue to offer stability 
and continuity for future generations, and will decide that one day the Prince of Wales should carry on the important work started by my father in 1949. By continuing to treasure and reinvigorate our associations and activities, I believe we will secure a safer, more prosperous and sustainable world for those who follow us. Thank you.